Okay, welcome back everybody to our second lecture on BC310, Church and Ministry Administration. Thank you for being on the class today. Uh, we're talking today about volunteer management. We've just uh, gone through uh, initial part of initial part of this lesson. Uh, I see a question from Roshan about, the um, uh, question is, is Stephen in Acts an example of a volunteer? So answer is yes, Roshan. So you'd find, um, you know, in, in the New Testament, uh, Stephen, the seven leaders who were appointed to uh, serve food um, uh, in, in the early church, and then, of course, a lot of other people who came alongside Paul. Um, it's very likely they all just, you know, just volunteered, worked with him. Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure in, in what way they were provided for. Uh, we know that Paul did provide for himself and part of his team. Uh, he writes about that in Acts 20 and 1 Thessalonians 2. Uh, but then there are also others who just served willingly. And uh, so these people in Acts chapter 6 who were appointed to serve at the tables were most likely just volunteers. Yeah. All right. Um, any other questions? Any other thoughts here before we move forward? Okay. Let's go to the notes. So, yeah, so um, what I was just saying when we were closing off the previous lecture is um, um, this whole volunteer thing is, is, um, is a huge uh, blessing to the church, uh, not only in terms of people you know, doing things at the church for the church, but it just builds a big sense of community. Uh, in those teams when people are able to work with each other and you know spend time with each other for example i know um, you know like uh, uh, and some of you on the class here on the call here are, are actually have been or are volunteers at abc so you know what it happens um, you know and i think of the worship team uh, to all the people you know who are volunteering the worship team, they have their own times out. They go for their retreats. They go for their things out. So this just builds a sense of community. Uh, the setup team, so the people who do all the setup, sound and stuff for them, this is a close community. They go out for lunch and things like that. Uh, you know, they work together in the church, but then they all go out and go out for lunch together uh, very often. And then, of course, uh, from the church side also, we encourage. Uh, that by providing for them certain things, so um, so in in many of these teams, because people are working together, it's a it's a big community. Uh, the youth the youth leaders, so the youth ministry has a lot of youth leaders volunteers. So again, they they spend time together. They meet in different homes. Sometimes they just meet to worship and so on. And so there's this good great community. Of course, they're also you know serving together. So, uh, just from what you know, we, we can observe, um, uh, volunteer teams are a great place to build community. Of course, people have to be willing to, you know, uh, be involved, and then they, they, they experience a great community happening. All right, let's pick up here now. Um, so, uh, once you enlist volunteers, so you get to keep the sign up process very simple. Okay, let me pause here let me just go to our uh, church website and just show you the sign up page uh, some of you may have already seen it but i think it's good for me just to quickly share that just for you to get an idea all right so if you go to our church website we have connect and we have volunteer so if you go there we just have a little very easy thing an easy page here uh, to sign up you can enter your mobile number and if you're already you know, your, your mobile number your name your address email address sorry uh, which location you are what's your age and where do you want to serve just click 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 sign up so 
uh, this immediately this email goes to our uh, the service coordinator in that location uh, whichever location you choose and that person will get in touch um, uh, with you so very simple straightforward form for people to um, sign up and uh, let us know they like to serve right okay go to the PDF now so once you you know once people sign up um, they need to know uh, very clearly uh, what 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 is it what do they need to do what are the specific tasks uh, what what do they need to have the skills or the abilities or so on uh, what are what are the policies and guidelines and uh, 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 how do they report and how they are held? How they're going to be held accountable? So, example: if you're a, if you sign up, if somebody signs up to be an usher, you know the ushering head in that location will you know get them on uh, enlisted and will explain to them, you know, hey, um, uh, for the for the service that starts at ten thirty, you need to be here by ten o'clock, and this is how you know we organize our teams. Uh, the the how the ushering team is organized. We need to cover all the sections of the auditorium, uh, and this is what we do. You know, we need to guide people to the front seats, occupy the seats from the front. Then there are other res responsibilities. Serving, you know, if you serve communion, uh, if somebody's forgotten to take their communion elements, uh, receiving the offering, giving the welcome, first time visitor bags. Uh, if there are new believers, giving them the new believers bag, you know, when they raise hands, or if there's an altar call, guiding people down to the altar, taking care of them there, those kinds of things. So these are all the responsibilities of the ushers. So they will be, you know, informed about that. Other than, you know, just being cordial, kind, and gentle, not much other, you know, uh, skills are required from the ushering team, just guiding people. And... Uh, accountability is look if you you know whatever time you know if you commit to once a month or twice a month you need to be there on those Sundays if you cannot make it for whatever reason you need to find you know swap with somebody else that's your responsibility you need to keep the team leader informed so on. so all these things you know we've put it down in docu in, in documents that are available here for various teams so it's easy now we can just walk them through the document and they will understand you know what what they're supposed to do for that particular volunteer role so it makes it very clear they know what to, to do and whom to report to what is what they're going to be held responsible for right now some other thoughts here about volunteers is um, it's it's a great way also like we were saying to you know strengthen the health of the local church community and wherever possible um, to engage people across um, age groups uh, different generations now you know it may not be it may not be available in all settings but wherever possible you know um, try to mix people together you know that is uh, you young people uh, and uh, or old people you get them all together mix them so then it's a great way to uh, build relationships between all age groups and they're all serving together they're all working together in that particular uh, ministry area you know so think about it and uh, wherever possible intentionally uh, bring people from different ages together from even different backgrounds bring them together so that they could uh, you know really um, they build that sense of community uh, Great opportunities for all ages, backgrounds to volunteer, and um, and, uh, and 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 tap into the strengths of each generation demography. You know, people bring in their different skills, their knowledge, experience. So you tap into that in various areas of ministry, and uh, yeah, and uh, like I said, it's it's uh, you know when we give people opportunity to work together across generations, it's a great experience of learning and mentoring you know so uh, just putting them together to serve helps uh, so think about that be intentional wherever possible about uh, demographics and strengthening local church community 
part of the orientation, uh, you know, when you're welcoming new volunteers, of course, they're introduced to the team. And nowadays, you know, many of them uh, are set up in email groups and WhatsApp groups. And that's how team leaders or they coordinate within those teams. So they introduce the teams. Um, they uh, help understand the values. Um, uh, this is what happens. Um, so for example, for Children's Church, once a year, there's a training that happens usually uh, end of May, uh, where you know the CC pass, um, the pastors of the Children's Church would take all the people who have signed up to volunteer in Children's Church. They'll take them through you know uh, various guidelines and so on, and say this is how we're going to work together. Um, so you're sharing of values and practices and so on, and. Uh, uh, um, so this this understanding this culture is very important, and also you know keep in mind that um, many of these volunteers are coming from professional backgrounds, so they expect things to be run in a very professional way, right? So if they come to a church volunteer team and they see things poorly done, it could actually turn them off. They'd say like, "Hey, I can't I can't work in this kind of environment." Because they are so used to working in a professional environment where everything's you know done efficient, most in many cases, things are done efficiently, things are done well, uh, people are serious about their work, and if they come into a setting where people are very lax, uh, people are very indifferent, they just then they they won't like to serve there. So we need to that the culture that we create that look we we are volunteers but we are striving for excellence. We are volunteers, but we are really committed to what we are doing. We are volunteers, but we really want to, you know, give the best for the congregation, for the people we are serving. So when they come into that kind of a culture, they are also energized. You know, they say, "Wow, I love to work in this kind of a team. These people are doing their best. I want to do my best for the Lord." You know, otherwise they may be turned off and they may not come back. So. Uh, that culture that is established in the volunteer team uh, among all the volunteer teams is very important and um, yeah we already mentioned about the policies and guidelines we take them through that um, in our volunteer and staff guidelines we emphasize personal life example that means as a volunteer your personal example is very important because people are going to be watching you you know, yes, you're a volunteer, but the moment you decide to serve as a volunteer, you become very visible. People can see you. And so your personal example is very important. Then how you relate to people, other people in the community is very important. So that those relationships, and then how do you relate to the leaders? That's also important. So we, in, in our volunteer guidelines, we address these three areas. Your personal life example, you're relating to the church community, and you're relating to the leaders who are appointed in those areas. Uh, so they're very clear that this is what is expected of them. That uh, uh, you know, in these three areas, we've got to uh, uh, be exemplary, and uh, you know, uh, con conduct yourself in a certain way. So it's important to clarify these policies. And of course, you can download and modify it for your own local church, but it's available here. Um, and then, uh, like we said, you train volunteers for different things, uh, depending on which area they're going to be involved in, uh, because we want to do everything well. You know, uh, and, uh, uh, perform the performance, the quality, the, um, the the teams need to be trained, and uh, they need to pursue excellence. So, uh, the training is important. They need to understand everything we do. We have to have excellence you know um so even if it's the media team doing presentation um you know I, I i give feedback if i see a spelling mistake um then monday they'll get an email from me saying hey there was a spelling mistake on one of those things that were projected now i don't do it because i want to knock people down but i do it because i want to emphasize to them that everything matters that when we project, you know, songs, lyrics, spelling has to be right, you know, or whatever we do, those kinds of things. So constantly in every area, you know, wherever I see something, feedback is given. Others are also welcome to give feedback. Team leaders 
hopefully do give feedback. The worship team does a review right there on the stage after the worship team, after the worship time. They all get together, they review what happened uh, so that they can learn immediately from that whole worship experience. What, what went right, what went wrong, how did God move, did we follow God? Uh, in his as he was moving, so they do that little check. So like that, that 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 whole sense of look, we got to work together well, uh, is created as part of the culture. And um, um, you know, we, we need to be very aware, that especially the volunteer team leaders. You know, what are the skills needed for this role? How can people learn them? How do we impart it to them? And uh, how can we give them the practical learning opportunities, especially you know if it has to do with things they have to do hands on, then you give them those opportunities. you know this is how you set it up, this is how you connect things and also so that those those training that training needs to happen. So keep in mind that uh, you know people learn in this is just a little side note here. Uh, people learn in very different ways. There are those who like to learn through pictures and those who like to learn uh, sound and those who like to hear through listening and those who like through doing and those who like reasoning and those who like uh, working in groups and those who like to do it on their own. So they're just this whole range of you know learning styles, learning types. So um, uh, depending on where we are training people, provide uh, as much uh, uh, stimuli as possible so that people can learn well. Right? Now, how do we engage volunteers? You know, keeping volunteers uh, properly engaged is also very important, right? Uh, now, keeping them motivated. They shouldn't come and do it like a job or they shouldn't do it like, oh man, I'm supposed to do it, so that's why I'm doing it. No, how do they should come with passion? They should come with zeal when they are coming to serve in the church or in the ministry. How do you keep them? So, you know, remember for volunteers that uh, it's an opportunity to engage in kingdom work and ministry. So this is a big motivator. Hey, I'm actually getting an opportunity to serve God as a volunteer. That's a big motivator, and that needs to be reinforced. We are serving God. We're not serving an organization. We're not serving, uh, yeah, we're not, you know, it's not, there is an organization, but this is beyond organization. This is serving God. This is serving God's kingdom, right? So that must be emphasized rather than the local church or the pastor or so on. Then the vision and mission is also important that what they're doing is serving what God has put upon the community, this the mandate God has given, that they are connected to it, that uh, I, I am part of this vision, I'm part of making this happen. You know, so uh, doing things that connect people to that is very important. We'll talk about some ways to do this. Um, and they're contributing meaningfully towards the vision of the organization. They need to see how, you know, what I am doing is making a difference in the overall vision. You know, uh, if you're leading worship, you're you're greeting people, you're welcoming new people, you're ushering, or you are serving in children's church, you're serving in teens church, you're serving the youth, whatever. And it's it's contributing towards what's happening, and that that needs to come from a leader. You know, if you thank them, uh, if you kind of, you know, in a very simple way, it doesn't have to be a long sermon, but simple ways that hey, what you are doing is helping in this fulfilling fulfilling this overall vision then you know they they uh they they see the connect and they that energizes people um also uh they you know it's an it's a it's a growth and a learning for for some for many of them you know that means they are learning some new skills you know they may come they may never may not know how to handle a camera but as a volunteer and they're saying hey I, i'm willing to learn they are learning a skill they are learning how to handle a camera. They are learning how to do live stream. They are learning how to handle audio, or whatever you know. So uh, uh, you, you, that is also a great motivator. Hey, I'm learning something which I won't learn in my workplace, or I didn't learn in school or college. I'm getting to do something here. And then, uh, for those who are uh, able, uh, they can serve as leaders, and uh, they can uh, you know bring uh, that expertise in in making decisions. And that's valuable. So 
you know, so they volunteer and they're able to share from their learning, their experience, and so on. And uh, another thing, uh, it may not be relevant for everybody, but for some people, hey, they start out as volunteers, but it could lead to a full-time paid position in the church. And, and that's what, you know, for many of our people, many of the staff who are working for the church today, many of them started as volunteers. You know, they were serving as a volunteer, and then uh, then we just reached out to them and said, hey, would you like to work for the church full-time? And, uh, you know, in many cases, they just transitioned from being a volunteer to being a church staff. So, and, you know, that's something we really like to do because uh, it, it has given us the opportunity to, to really understand that person when they were serving as volunteers, you know. And uh, and uh, honestly, today when I look at the volunteers, you know, they're like, like at least like 15 people I'd love to hire and say, you know, just work for the church. Uh, but I can't do that, of course, because they're all, they're already doing certain things in life. But I'd really love to have those people be full time with church because of the passion in which they serve, uh, because you know their heart towards God and the way they serve. You know, uh, so it's it's so when people are volunteering, it's a great opportunity to see where they are, uh, to see, of course, the skill, the, the the expertise they have, and at the same time their passion for God. And uh, then you know when you when you bring them as church staff, you you're totally comfortable uh, because you've already got to see see them uh, as people. Um, so we, um, yeah, yeah, some other things is, uh, you know, you create opportunities for them to contribute meaningfully, have a clear schedule. And of course, one thing uh, that I always look out for and, you know, tell others to look out for is we don't want to overwork them, right? Uh, we don't want them to feel uh, like, man, church has tired me out and burnt me out, you know? So, uh, you know, so we, we try to say, okay, hey, just, just you know, maybe volunteer once a month or twice a month, or, or you know, just just try to look out for them. You don't want people to get burnt out. You know. Now, uh, on their own, if they want to do it, you know, a volunteer every Sunday, of course, that's their choice. But then you still look out that make sure that they don't get overworked or burnt out, or they shouldn't get spiritually drained while they are serving. So that's something to keep an eye on. Okay, now. There is a uh, software that uh, you know that you use to track people, information, so on. Uh, we will cover that in uh, um, you know I might show that later this course, or I will uh, we'll definitely look into it in our ne course next month, the next sorry next semester on media and technology. We'll get into that. Now, changing things a little bit. One big area. Okay, let me pause to see if there are any questions. Everyone's together. Any questions so far? All good. Okay. All right. Okay, um, um, so one big thing we have to keep in mind is the relationship between volunteers and staff. So this is an area we have to manage very well, right? So remember, we have staff, people are working for the church full-time, they're 40 hours a week, they are in charge of ministry areas, a lot of things. And then you have volunteers who are coming in who are serving. They're also wonderful people. But how they work together is so important. And this is a big area to think about and to manage very carefully. right? Because if this breaks down, then uh, I, would, I would say it's really bad. It's really bad. You cannot afford to have this uh, uh, relationship between staff and volunteers break down. They, they need to be working together very well, right? So what are some things to keep in mind? First of all, the staff, the church staff, should understand volunteers, right? You know, uh, 
volunteers come in many different shapes and sizes, meaning there are volunteers who are really passionate and there are volunteers like who are half-hearted and then there are volunteers, sometimes they may have their own personal agendas. So you just you know, have all those kinds of things. And here you have church staff who are already full-time with the church and they, 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 they have to get things done and they have to work with volunteers. So they need to understand, hey, they are volunteers. You can't this, you know, you can't push them. This is how much you can expect from them. Uh, take care of them, treat them well, so on and so forth. You know, so that has to go into the understanding of the church staff. And then there has to be, you know, trust, respect, and uh, uh, it's honoring each other for their work. You know, so uh, the volunteers uh, should learn to appreciate church staff and the church staff should learn to appreciate the volunteers right uh, so like yeah uh, you know th there has to be this respect and uh, uh, for each other that's important and then creating that sense of teamwork harmony and so on so you encourage that by you know hey guys go out together for lunch uh, guys you know uh, have a day out or whatever you know different teams can do things or just have lunch together, things like that. So you create that sense of, hey, we are together. Yeah, you know, we are, some are church staff, some are volunteers, but we are a team. So, you, you know, you try to create that understanding. We are together, we have to work. And then um, uh, communication is very important that, uh, you know, we clearly, meaningfully, and in a very transparent way, uh, communicate with staff and volunteers now if uh, sometimes you know we don't communicate with volunteers we think hey they don't need to know but sometimes you know if volunteers are well informed they feel part of the organization and then they feel like okay i belong you know just the fact that they have been informed makes them feel belonging belong that they belong to the organization so that communication how we communicate how we keep them informed so on is also very important right and um, and if there is a breakdown, then address the matter as soon as possible. You know, something goes wrong. Sometimes it's just a little misunderstanding. Sometimes uh, something, some small thing went wrong. Okay, uh, confusion. Immediately address that because you have to protect the relationship between this church staff and the volunteers. It has to be good relationship because everybody has to work together peacefully. Everybody has to work together as a team. And so the moment you find something going wrong, hey, try to sort it out, right? So as a pastor or as pastors, leaders, this relationship is something that you have to watch over and care for. Now, how do you, how can you identify if something is going wrong? You know, sometimes, People don't know who's supposed to do what, and this happens. <laughs> this happens. Okay, the volunteers think, "Hey, church staff, he should do it on a Monday or a Tuesday because he's working full time. He has to do it." And the staff says, "No, oh, no, no, that volunteer, volunteer." So there's little confusion. Okay, who's supposed to do it? Yeah. So that clear assigning of work and responsibility. Okay, this has to be done by the staff, and this will be done by the volunteers. Okay, suppose they are not cooperating on joint projects. So you you know you told them, okay, guys, you know, uh, work on this together. But they are actually, sorry, but they are actually not working together. Then you know there's a problem, right? Or if they're knocking down each other's ideas, they're not receiving ideas from each other. Okay, oh, that came from a volunteer staff puts it down, or that came from a staff volunteer puts it down. So then they are, they're not receiving each other's ideas and suggestions. No. So if you see that kind of a thing, a, no, let's, let's be open. We need to create a culture where ideas and suggestions can come from anybody, whether it's a staff or a volunteer, everybody's welcome to give their ideas. And if it's a good idea, we will do it, you know. So uh, we have to keep that open and cre create that kind of a, culture or if people are having secret meetings amongst themselves you know staff go off and they have their own meeting they don't communicate back to 
the volunteers and volunteers do their own meeting they don't communicate back to the staff then that's an indication of a problem uh, they're not sharing information with each other they're not communicating directly but they're going through other means you know uh, the volunteers are asking the uh, staff or a leader may speak to somebody else somewhere else to get information okay all these things are indicative that the relationship is broken down right and uh, and then using us and them language the moment I hear our staff talking like that I say hey no you cannot you can't talk like that we are one team yeah volunteers and staff we are one team it should be us we you know so that's the language we use or uh, you know if they're becoming territorial you know this is my territory you can't come here i'm doing it you know things like that. so these are all things just symptoms that uh, if you see these kinds of things happening then you know that there's a breakdown in the relationship between the church staff and the volunteers and you need to address things right most importantly don't even let it come to this stage it right? shouldn't come down the moment there's a problem try to address it try to sort it out you know and so as a pastor you need to be talking to the church staff or the team leaders checking how things are going to keep a keep a tab on the pulse of what's happening you know okay yeah things okay fine you know so regularly and you know, how are things going how is everybody doing teams okay any problems uh, things like that so uh, you keep in touch then you can you, uh, you can recognize you know if there's anything going wrong address it right and uh, of course you know when when there's something wrong find out what went wrong why was the problem why was it caused and how do we fix it right what what can we do to fix it do it as soon as possible uh, in that situation last few thoughts here um, uh, you know it's good to give feedback to the teams uh, on a regular basis right? that um, how people are doing give feedback uh, communicate and so you communicate it the same way so if I find a problem uh, I, I treat the staff and the volunteers who are involved the same way. Say, hey guys, this is a problem we have to fix. It's not like staff has to fix it or volunteers have to fix it. No, we have to fix it. So that way, like everybody knows that, look, the team is considered as a team, whether it's made up of staff or volunteers. They're treated equally, they're held responsible equally, they share their blame equally, and they share the 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 you know they share the applause equally you know everything is equal so you commend them equally if somebody a team does well hey just commend all of them staff and volunteers uh, thank all of them you know so that way you're giving them feedback and so on and then always show appreciation so some of the things that we do is uh, we have once a year what we call as a volunteer appreciation day uh, we've been doing it for many many years i guess for a long time now uh, once a year we we give a special thank you gift to all the volunteers who served the previous year six months at least six months so we give them a gift uh, just to say thank you uh, we have a lunch and all of those things so volunteer appreciation. The other ways you kind of appreciate various teams. So we say, hey, we tell the team leaders, you can take your team out for lunch uh, twice a year, take them out for lunch. Uh, of course, we couldn't do it, you know, the last two and a half years, but generally it's okay. Take your teams out for lunch, just say thank you to them at a team level. Uh, then, uh, you know, just different ways. And on an ongoing, on almost every Sunday, I just go around walking, thanking people. Thank you for serving. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Appreciate it. So at a personal level, people say, okay, you know, I'm being appreciated for what I'm doing. And then we have all these big things, the volunteer appreciation day, the lunches for the various teams, their own retreats, their own days out, um, just to say thank you, you know, for what you're doing. Uh, it costs money, but if you think about it, whatever you spend, uh, you know, for a gift or for a lunch, uh, it cannot, 
you know, it's nothing compared to all the hours of effort and energy that people are putting in to serve. So it's it's more than worth uh, worth it doing these things. Okay, and um, yeah, so some things to think about in today's world, especially, is uh, that you can leverage technology for volunteers to engage remotely. Uh, uh, they can serve, and uh, also when uh, volunteers are serving cross-culturally, uh, you need to sensitize them to local customs and so on, culture and customs. So um, these are potential opportunities to think about uh, when you, uh, in today's world, especially because of technology, that uh, you know you could have volunteers serving from different places as well. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this lesson. I'm gonna pause here. Let's see if there are any questions, any things we would like to discuss. So today we talked about volunteer management, taking care of our volunteers who serve in church or in the Christian ministry. Uh, let's open this time for questions, discussions. Can I ask, Pastor? Go ahead, please. So uh, many many come to volunteer, but some come out of their calling. Some come out of their, you know, just a willingness to serve. But uh, with the due course of time as they serve, uh, they, they lack that uh, commitment or they lack that zeal. And they do because, you know, sometimes uh, they feel that they're serving God or they are serving the church. So they don't want to back out, but they don't have that commitment. They continue just because, you know, of uh, some uh, personal answerability or sin. So how can we, uh, you know, motivate people who, you know, la show lack of commitment or uh, they feel uh, a bit weary in their uh, mm. so serving? Yeah. So I think uh, what the volunteer team leader, you know, should uh, typically the volunteer team leader is the one who can observe these things. And some of the things that we can do, one is to encourage them to take a break, you know. So sometimes people feel tired and we we should encourage them to take a break. And I know um, over the years we've told people or people in the worship team and others, they said, you know, I'm taking a break for three months. I'm taking a break for six months. Uh, and it's not bad. It's just that, you know, like you said, they may feel very tired or they feel overcommitted or they may be going through a season in life when a lot of other things are happening in the background in their own life. And so they need to take a break. So that is one thing that can be done if that is the cause, that they're just feeling tired, they're feeling burnt out. They're still coming, you know, they're just showing up, but they're not there, you know, with zeal and passion. Maybe they're tired. Maybe they need spiritual input, you know. So that means they have been so involved in doing work that they have drained themselves out spiritually. And so they need to be refreshed and renewed in just their understanding uh, of God, of his calling, of his kingdom. So then again, we say, hey, you need to do that. So one of the things we emphasize, especially for those who are serving, you know, in children's church and teen church, and you know, because they tend to miss the main service because they're out there serving. And so I, I try to, right from beginning, I think, right from the early days, 2002, 2003, those years, I should tell, I should emphasize, please go and listen to the sermons, please go and keep yourself spiritually built. Uh, because, you know, this obvious reason, they miss out on the worship, they miss out on the main, you know, where people are together. So sometimes they said they have lost that focus. Uh, and they're still coming, but spiritually, because of them missing out on the main service for so long, um, they could feel a little disconnected and disoriented in that sense. So that's another area. And sometimes it's just that, uh, you know, something has changed in life. Uh, life's responsibilities has taken over. And then I think it's good that uh, the team leader recognizes it 
and uh, advises them to take a break um, and 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 of course if they're not keeping their commitment you know and it's impacting you know what's happening uh, then if they're not really committed they're not doing it with wholeheartedly it will affect the ministry so again there the team leader should you know lovingly tell them you know uh, take a break come back later when you're you know, when you're able to do this with zeal and passion so so I think the answer is uh, the, we need to recognize what is the cause what is the reason it's not the same for everybody but and then try to you know encourage them to make time to address that in their lives so that they can renew their passion they can renew their zeal for that area or maybe just that season of life is over and they need to transition to another season and so they need to let them know that hey you move on to something else now yeah. thank you pastor yeah you're welcome good any other questions on volunteers taking care of volunteers managing volunteers of the church okay so overall this is a big area um, because in almost all church settings you will have more volunteers than church staff so at one point this was before the pandemic we were you know we had maybe just 20 staff but over 300 volunteers um, now of course things are coming back together and so that numbers will slowly come back up um, so you know just a big difference almost 10 you know 10 times more so taking care of the volunteers is so important uh, overseeing them uh, managing them and then uh, resolving problems that happen all those things are are very important and uh, for the for the health of the local church or the Christian ministry okay so let's wrap up for today uh, I just request somebody to pray and then we will dismiss the class anybody can pray with us please yes, can you hear me? Um, uh, maybe you should use Kungilu's mic or something. Okay, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Dear God, thank you so much for your love and thank you for everything, Lord. Lord, as we learned about uh, volunteers and staff, God, that we may be faithful in the few things that you've given us, Lord, that we may seal because of who you are in our lives, God, that we may glorify you in everything we do, God. That, thank you so much, God, for giving us the opportunity to learn of how to know what it means to be a volunteer, and that we may encourage each one of each one, Lord, as we. Um, future become a volunteer or staff God. And I thank you so much, Lord, for Pastor Ashish. I pray a blessing over his life. And Lord, that you bring many more people who will be willing to serve and with a heart that is grateful and ready to be uh, content in every area, God. Thank you so much, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of the day. Have a great uh, weekend. I'll see you all next week. God bless. Bye now. Thank you, Buster. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.